live am i live hey i'm hoping i am live if i pushed all the right buttons hello hello it's lisa Turner here from psychademy we're a spiritual and consciousness awakening organization and we specialize in training professional coaches and practitioners now the techniques that we've that we've developed in-house in psychademy have been used to coach the military with ptsd as well as members of parliament and even previous uh, members of the shadow cabinet as well as business leaders so why am i talking about these this transformational techniques because because this this series of facebook lives is all about how we become that still point when the world around us is in chaos so in the previous lives we talked about those spiritual leadership power centers and we last uh, yesterday we talked about the earth leader a couple of weeks ago i was talking about um why we're having so much separation and division and polarity and them and us right now in the world and um why there seems to be so much divisiveness you know the vaccination versus anti-vaxxers the or pro-choice the um the you know the right and the left the reds and the blues in terms of what color pajamas you're wearing or political parties i have no i have no judgment i on any of that but there seems to be so much division so in the a uh, uh, couple of weeks ago we talked about this idea of the chakras of society being activated and at the beginning of last century after the wars and depression that being about getting the um, national health, about social security, about council housing, about getting our needs met. That was the base chakra. Then the 60s was this sexual revolution. That was the sacral chakra. Then in the 80s, this was the time of um, uh, sort of individuality and me and I and personal power, personal preferences. This was, you know, that sort of Thatcher generation. This was the lots of people going out into business. And there were several um uh, you know, lots of people kind of setting up their own businesses, massive time of growth and science and technology. This was the solar plexus chakra of society, not just individuals. Then we had in the 90s, we had this explosion of therapies and compassion and love and group hugs. This was the heart chakra, compassionate leader. Then we have this explosion of um, uh, um uh, this explosion of internet, exactly what I'm using now, the broadcasting, podcasting, videoing, YouTubing, iPodding, and all this communication with all this social media. This is the throat chakra. Now, if you can see me and hear me, let me know. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you thought of our previous Facebook Lives. So what? So where we are now is in every time a chakra, the chakra above activates, it's um, every time the one above activates. So right now we're at the place of the third eye about to activate. But what happens is the one below becomes excessive or it comes out of kind of get it needs that out of balance in order to pierce the one above. So what we had was, um, hey, Rach, good to see you here. So I had a little moment of excitement with the um, with the uh, interesting internet. <laughs> so, well, my throat chakra wasn't, or via the internet wasn't working, but now we are, so we're all good. So, um, so what we have is just before the chakra above activates, the one below becomes bloated. So in order for us to activate the base chakra, the one below had to become like, well, like the previous cycle, actually, it was. So we had to have the depression, the recession, the wars, the, the, that devastation in order for people to push that forward into the base chakra activating so that people are going, OK, got enough food to eat, to eat, got somewhere to live. Then we had the, hey, Maria, good to see you. Um, so then we had the drawback of the base chakra or the bloating of the base chakra if you like. So the, the base chakra became overactive and that was all became very rigid, very conformist. You had to follow the rules. And that led to everyone going, no, I'm not going to wait. No, I want to have fun now. And that led to the sacral chakra opening. Now, when the solar plexus chakra, that became overexpressed. And so there was a stock market boom and then bust. And people either, they either got burnt mm -hmm. or they burnt out. And they, they started to say there must be more to life than this. And that's what led to the heart chakra opening. Now, where we are right now is in this quite significant overexpression 
of the throat chakra. So we've got to this place where everyone's opinion is equally valid, even if they have no expertise or no knowledge. And maybe you've seen that. I don't know. I'd heard that some people who had never done any studies in something scientific were claim making scientific claims and saying, my opinion is just as valid as yours. And then we also have the, well, my intuition is just as valid as the brain surgeon. Now, this, um, and, you know, I kind of sound like I'm a bit, I'm judging and, and what, but I'm, what I'm pointing out is where it doesn't work. I, and here's the example of this. Would you rather, like if you're going to have like major and seriously complicated surgery, would you rather go to the somebody who's done no study, they've ne they, you know, they've never been to medical school, but they're highly intuitive and they know just how to drill a hole in your skull and do whatever it is they're going to do. Would you be okay with that? And I mean, if you are okay with that, then that's great. Personally, I prefer the person who's done some medical training and probably there's an anesthetist around or some good drugs for afterwards and somebody who really knows what they're doing. So this is where it's not that nobody is better than anyone else, but when you have this overexpression of the throat chakra, it's too much of a particular kind of energy. So yesterday we talked about the earth leader. So the earth leader, just to remind you, that earth leader is the person who is practical, grounded, centered. They're fully alive, full of physical health and vigor. They're the master of themselves, of their life. They can easily manifest abundance. They take action. This is the person who can set budgets, gets the tax in on time, gets the bills paid. And, um, you know, they've done all that. This is the accountant in your business. This is the person who would typically work in small groups or being a leader of one or just a few people at a time. Now, this does not diminish not only their importance and their value, but the importance and value of you having that in your system. Because if any of these are out of balance, you're actually, you're like, it only takes one to be out of balance and your whole power um, center system tends not to work so well. So, and last time we talked about the overexpression and the underexpression of the earth leader. And if you missed that, I will tell you um, how you can uh, in next week. I'm running a masterclass where we're going to take you through exactly how you can activate each of these leadership power centers. So let's talk about the ecstatic leader. So the ecstatic leader relates to the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra of society was activated in the 60s. But if you don't have it active now, this will cause you all of the... Um, any one of the power centers not active will create problems. So this isn't just that your chakra is being activated. This is from the perspective of how you lead. It's a leadership quality. And the ideal is you would have access to every single one of those qualities. You'll have a preference for some and a pref and a, 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 you'll prefer some and you'll be less comfortable with others. And some you'll have a default that you go back to. So the ecstatic leader, this person is this leader is friendly, they're, she's optimistic, she's creative, imaginative, she's intuitive and clairsentient. This person enjoys food and enjoys physical pleasure, whether it's getting massages, whether it's moving their body, whether it's dancing. This person is typically, as a leader, she's tactile and this is the person who will hug you. This person, this leader, easily tunes into others she instantly knows it's like there's this resonance there where she knows what others put what somebody else needs and she's able to connect with them on that level this person is magnetic and charismatic they're flexible they're able to adapt to new situations like me a moment ago crawling underneath under my desk to plug back in my internet connection. I don't know why I'd come unplugged. Anyway, this person, the leadership, um, the um, ecstatic leader, this person, not only do they love to have fun, they create an environment, an environment of fun. They show concern for others. Uh, they're in, uh, they are, and they feel emotions, but appropriately. This person, this leader is most likely to say, Let's have some fun. Let's make this a game. Let's gamify whatever it is, this thing we have to do. Now, like all leadership styles, you can be over-expressing them or under-expressing them. So 
an over ecstatic, we call it, an, sorry, an over, over ecstatic, an overactive ecstatic leader. This is the person who is overly emotional. They are overreacting typically to every tiny life event from missing the bus to a 10 pound lottery win. It's like, you know, their best, they've lost their, you know, most important thing in life or they've gained the biggest thing in life. They're extremes of anger, despondency or elation and ecstasy. They're in this massive emotional extreme. This leader, when it's overexpressed, will swing between these emotional extremes of despair to rapture. Often they're quite influenced and unduly by other people's emotions and they often don't have great boundaries. This over, so the overactive ecstatic leaves are, they can use and sometimes misuse their ability to tune into others. So either they feel it as being misused because they're quite, they can be manipulated by others. And sometimes they, they use it to create or even encourage a kind of codependency, almost like a cultic, like a cult sort of following. This power center, they enable change and the overactive um, um, overactive ecstatic leader. They make too many changes and people can't keep up. So this person is um, the over ecstatic. Remember, this is the over expressed um, ecstatic leader. So this is emotionally explosive, manipulative, often highly superstitious, like with ridiculous superstitions. They're jealous, can even be aggressive. They can get quite caught up in illusion. They're often obsessed with their appearance, both physical and their reputation. They care more about their, sometimes their physical appearance and reputation than they do about what's inside. Um, they're overindulgent, so they'll overeat. They'll be self-serving. They'll often be over. So they're overindulgent, whether they're overeating, um, uh, like just over enjoying like, and they don't even actually enjoy it, the, the pleasures of life, because they they just over indulge. So they might sleep too much. They might drink too much. They might eat too much. They might become quite um, indulgent in too much sex. They can use. So this is the, the chakra, the energy center of sexuality. And whereas when it's balanced, this person is quite magnetic and charismatic because they use it in a balanced way. When it's overexpressed, they're actually kind of, um, uh, they will use their sexuality to get what they want. Um, this person with its overexpression is an out of balance empath who just becomes swamped by the emotions of others. And then they blame others for making them feel bad. And one of the things I've noticed, if you notice this, in fact, I, so I'll share a personal story. So I was in, and I'm in lots of groups on Facebook, and I was in a spiritual group, and I was asking some questions about something someone was saying. And I said, I'm just not sure I'm understanding this. Could you clarify this? And would you be willing to share? And then somebody said, your energy is making me feel really icky. I don't like being around your energy. And I, I, it was kind of, it was quite, um, it was quite, uh, projecting it was quite um um oh how to explain this but you know it was like there was no there like and I, even when I say you know I'm really sorry what you know what did I do like what what do I need to change what do I fix they were like it's just your energy it's just your energy and it's like I don't know about you but someone says like just your energy like I wouldn't know how necessarily like you'd have to be quite a sophisticated energy worker to know how to just just fix your energy so um, so, th so that's that's probably a sign that that person was an overexpressed, um, ecstatic leader. That they were just being swamped by, like, it may not even be my energy, somebody else's emotions, and they'll blame others for making them feel okay. And you know, that's the empath. Like, everyone's got to be happy around me because otherwise, I'm too sensitive and you'll upset me. So you must be happy and be nice to me all the time. And that's like, do you get how kind of manipulative that is? Wendy's saying, absolutely. What good, what good is a blame game? Yeah, it's, it is actually quite emotionally immature. But you know what? Let's not be judgmental because we've probably all been there a little bit sometimes. But it is a sign of an out of balance. So let's just use it not as like that's the person. It's just what they're doing right now. <clears throat> now, another sign that this person is a, of an overexpressed um, ecstatic leader is they continually pursue pleasure, but they don't re ever really experience it or enjoy it. So this is the person who's constantly seeking more and more. Now, this is the, the person that this person is most likely to say something like um, 
they'll refuse to do something if it isn't fun or just if it doesn't feel nice. And you know what? Sometimes in life, you've got to do stuff that's not necessarily fun. And that's not a limiting belief. It's actually what makes the fun fun is the fact that, you know, I, um, uh, so if you were going to run a marathon, right? I personally not big into running, but if you were going to run a marathon, you would need to do some running training. Now, what if you just want to, I just want to run the marathon and have the fun of winning, but without any actual training. Like, and I don't want to do any training because it's hard work. This is the person who won't do what's necessary to get the result that they want. And then they'll be quite blamey about it. Okay, that's the overactive. Let's look at the underactive earth leader, um, ecstatic leader. So the uh, underactive, underexpressed, this person is cold, shy, timid, terrified of emotions, their own and others. They create an environment where emotions are unwelcome. They're fearful, self-deprecating to the point of embarrassment. They have low self-esteem and they believe that no one loves or likes or cares for them. And this can actually present as not just shyness, like people could be shy and introverted, but as like a passive aggression. They're rigid, frigid, and they cannot, cannot adapt to change. So when, th when circumstances change, they're just like, they're like, no, I'm going to do it like this. And it was really interesting. I had a client or actually a prospect. She never became a client because, <laughs> and you'll see why in a minute. So she, so she phoned me up with a particular problem and she was like, I do anything to solve this, anything. I said, great, I'm running a course and it happens to be on this date. And she goes, no, no, I can't come on that date. That's the day I always go and visit my dad. And it's like, okay, like you, you wouldn't be able to like see him on a Friday instead of a Saturday. Nope, Saturday is the day when I see my dad. I can't change it. Like never, ever. And it wasn't like her dad was elderly particularly or, you know, it was just like that was what she did on Saturday. And I was like, have there ever been a time when you would change this? And I, and she was like, never, I will never change this. This is, and I, this is the day I see my dad. And I'm like, so can't come to that training, that work, that, um, that retreat. And I said, you know what, this is great. And thank you. And I love you. And I don't know how I'm going to be able to help you because the thing about change is if you can't even change the day of the week that you do something like that is such a fixture. What, how are we else going to create any other kind of change in her, how is she going to change anything else in her life? She can't even change the day she does this thing. So that's a sign of an underexpressed, rigid, locked up, ecstatic leader. So this person um, struggles to feel emotions. They bury their emotions. They're extremely um, reserved and timid. And they often use this as a kind of, they, they can come across as quite judgy. They're immobilized by fear. They're in constant terror and anxiety, often because they have a lot of shame. They're unable to open to any new experiences. They're very overly sensitive, which is why they um, become so rigid because they have to they have to avoid anything that might trigger them. They avoid pleasure and they judge others for allowing them to feel pleasure. They're self-negating, they're resentful, they're burdened by guilt, they're distrustful, clingy, and they deny their own true desires. It's almost like they kind of even go like, oh, I'd love a piece of chocolate. I'm not going to have one, but I would really like one. They go, no, no, I just don't eat chocolate and I don't ever enjoy it. This person, the underexpressed ecstatic leader is, leader, is most likely to say something like, well, life isn't all fun and games, you know. So those are the two. That, so when it's balanced, you can be flexible. You can enjoy pleasure. But in balance, you create an environment that's fun, that's flexible, full of flow and creativity. When it's underexpressed, this is the person that's um, guilty, shameful, clingy, shy, rigid, inflexible, cannot change, cannot adapt. When it's overexpressed, this is the person that's overly emotional, emotionally explosive, superstitious, jealous, aggressive, caught up in the illusion and delusion. Now, one of the things about the pandemic, I, the pandemic, although it, I mean, in, in, lot, in many, many ways, it's been terrible, hasn't it? But what it has done is it's, it's stripped away a lot of things um, that, that actually they weren't serving us, but that they made us feel safe and comfortable. You know, one of the things about the pandemic is it broke the whole consumerist capitalistness of society. So in a material society, 
So if you think about it, what, you know, we had this quite material driven and I don't I'm not talking about individuals. So don't take this as any way blame me. It's just we had a society that that where value and meaning was created by where you lived, the size of your house, the job you had, the clothes you wore, the makeup you wore, where you traveled to, your fancy Instagram photos, your makeup, your hair, how you looked, your possessions, your jewelry, your lifestyle. And what and it was all very superficial and materialistic. Now, in the pandemic, of course, what then becomes a priority? Well, health, fundamentals of wealth, like real wealth of being able to support and sustain yourself, not with glamour and illusion, but actually paying the bills, and having a mechanism for that. And so your health, your real fundamental wealth, but also what was so what was um, and your real deep inner connection. You know, the the pandemic forced, it stripped everyone of this illusion, anything that was this superficiality. And, you know, if you if you you know, if you think about it, it's like suddenly the clothes you wear, how you looked, your you know, nobody could travel. So even if you were traveling to fancy places, you couldn't now. And so that, you know, that is kind of those status symbols. They lost all meaning. And what what it, the result is now, our connections are, we, we've needed to be able to have those connections that are on another level, a deep a way of connecting with ourselves and others deeply through technology, like we're connecting now, I hope. That's, you know, that's my, that's my hope for you, that you feel this connection and this understanding and this, this, this love for you that you can feel this and feel this as this expression of me as who I am. You know, I've done a lot of um, tantric trainings and things. And one of the things we talk about in tantra is we talk about standing in our truth. And when you, when you, in certain groups, that, that phrase, standing in your truth, what that is actually, what that actually means is it means being naked. And what the pandemic's done is it stripped us naked. Now, those of you, of us, and it's okay if you're not there because on a, in the work in the masterclass next week, I'm going to show you if you feel you've got any of these out of balance. I'm going to show you how you can get them back into balance. So the um, but if you have any of this, it's like it, you know the, what the pandemic does has done, and the situation is it stripped us naked and and caused us to say, you know, here I am, Lisa, connecting with you. Wendy, Maria, and whoever else, I'm not sure, you know, I've got lots of people watching, and I know people will be watching the replay, so hello in the future, me connecting with you, and that's, that's what we'll be experiencing, that's what will be valued, and those who can't connect with themselves, those who can't, who don't know themselves, can't know themselves, has that have those feelings of unworthiness, um, shame, and guilt, who can't be flexible and adapt, you know, when, um, uh, when when the pandemic hit and everyone was kind of freaking out because they wouldn't be able to do all the things that they they love doing, and I'm like, you know, I, I I so some of you may or may not know that I was I was kept as a virtual house prisoner for about five years in my teens. Let's say like, so I couldn't go out, couldn't connect with others. So I learned how to be with me, and everyone's freaking out because they can't go to the pub, and I'm like, like metaphorically, hold my beer, I got this. <laughs> like I staying at home, I know staying at home and being okay with that. I know how to do this. And I have, you know what? It's like, I haven't actually even been on a big shopping spree or, you know, shopping trip. I haven't been, it's hardly changed since we've come out of lockdown. My life's hardly changed. I think I did do something different. What did I do? I went in, I can't remember. I think I went into a shop that wasn't open before. One, the one. That's right, it was a shoe shop. I went into a shoe shop. <laughs> Didn't even buy any shoes. <laughs> so, um, so, those are the signs of a, a balanced ecstatic leader, an overexpressed and an underexpressed. So where do you think you might be? Let's let's have this total non-judgmental zone. And it's okay. Have you struggled to adapt and be flexible? Have you been too flexible? Do you, do other people cross your boundaries? That's a sign that you've got one or the other, over or under expression. So where where might you be? And I hope you've enjoyed this Facebook Live. Let me know if you have any questions. Share any thoughts. What did you find most valuable? What did you find most interesting? What was your biggest aha about this? And tomorrow we are going to explore the courageous leader.
power center. Actually, do you know what would be a really fun game? Think about who do you think might be the expression of an earth leader? So yesterday I talked to you about um, Mother Teresa. Tomorrow what I'll do is I'll share who I think is a great ecstatic leader. But let post who do you think is either a current or past leader that demonstrates a balanced ecstatic leader or an over or an under expressed one? Who do you think? I'd love to. I'd, lo I'd be fascinated as to who you think is there somebody in the public um, the public eye who demonstrates over or under expression or balanced ecstatic leader. So I can think of someone who I think is an overexpressed ecstatic leader and they're no longer in power and they might have had, I don't know, a certain tangerine tinge to them. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. What do you think? And it's OK. I'm not there's no judgment of him or that person. Just I think they demonstrated some of those qualities. But what do you think? So. Look forward to share it, seeing your comments. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you love it, click the love button. If you think somebody else would benefit from this series, tag them. Make sure you're following the page and make sure you hit the, um, uh, that you um, can, uh, what do you get notified when we go live here in Psych Academy. So till then, huge, huge love to you. Go and be magnificent. Go enjoy yourself. Go and have fun. I'm going to go have fun. I'm going to go do my exercise video because my exercise class because I love that I use Les Mills on demand at home that's what I'm going to do so till next time huge huge love to you I've got to look for the right button to click there we go in broadcast huge love to you till next time bye for now <laughs>